All right, thank you. Uh, good evening, everyone. It is Thursday, April 11th, and uh, I call the meeting of the Select Board to order at 620. Please join me in citing the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. Uh, we uh, announcements. Um, this meeting is being recorded. Uh, the town is recording. Uh, if you're recording privately, please indicate. Just raise your hand. Thank you, uh, Mr. Kelleher and Mr. Leepag, as usual. All right. Um, that's it for announcements today. Uh, so let's move right on to the agenda. Agenda item number one: Permanent Highway Superintendent candidate Peter DeFlorio. Take a point on this. Uh, please, Beth. You okay. you have led us on this. So, um, so I took uh, as we discussed in the last meeting. We received we we interviewed Mr. DeFlorio. Mm -hmm. um, Y'all authorized me to go do a reference check and to talk potential terms with mm -hmm. Mr. DeFlorio. So first of all, I checked all of his personal references, which included a select uh, a current standing selectman from Rutland one of his former water department employees, uh, a contractor which he both worked and has a personal relationship with just like, you know, friends out, you know, mm -hmm. relative to, to work. And then a police sergeant from Rutland PD and then uh, Mr. Kelleher, who's uh, yeah. our current interim. Mm -hmm. uh, the, the level of consistency of the references was really quite impressive. Um, and uh, all of it uh, indicated really solid skills working with residents, working with other departments, uh, being knowledgeable about the water work, being ready and willing to mentor others in that, um, as well as being, you know, kind of first guy in the hole was the term that his, his uh, prior employee did. So, mm -hmm. you know, he wasn't gonna ask his people to do anything that he doesn't do. Um, and uh, that also just he's a, he outside of work also does stuff for the community um, with like the local veterans organizations and, and such so uh, somebody who understands like really supporting the community holistically i would say mm -hmm. so um in talking with mr DeFlorio about ter terms um uh, where we landed was at $40 per hour, which is a little bit higher than what we were planning on for the budget for next year, but given that he brings the water certifications to the table, mm -hmm. I think it's a fair uh, place to land. And it's only, I think, $1,000 more uh, annually from a base salary perspective than what um, was the a original ask from the highway department for this year. Mm -hmm. So I think they were at 79, that would put, put them just about, just over 80. Okay. Uh, from think, a base pay perspective. I think getting another water certification in the house is uh, certainly a uh, valuable add for the town. Right, absolutely. Saves us money. Yeah, it does, yeah. absolutely. So, um, so and basically, uh, and I, I, I had shared it prior, but I know that y'all are probably busy during the day too, and it was a last minute add. I basically drafted a very simple um, offer letter that indicates a start date of the 29th of April, uh, $40 an hour. Um, the benefits per our standard bylaws and, uh, and uh, uh, policies and um, including I did call out just to be specific that he would be taking a town uh, town cell phone basically um, for for work use um, and then also that um, we do have a standing vehicle policy that the highway super the uh, police chief and the fire chief all can take a town vehicle home back and forth. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> and that's true of the water, super, water superintendent as well. So where he'd be responding for, you know, similar to the other public service employees, I just wanted to call that out explicitly. Uh, and it indicates a three year term, um, renewable, and then uh, some boilerplate language just because we are an at will state that, it, that this is not a contract, that this is an offer of employment, but that it's it's not necessarily, you know, a three-year contract. A three-year contract, right? Mm -hmm. Right. So, um, so I'd like to make a motion that we go ahead and authorize you to sign his offer letter. Okay. Um, I've got some questions. Yeah, we can do that. Just second it, and we can discuss. Yes, exactly. All right. So, second. 
Okay, uh, all right, um, <coughs> for discussion, um, was a probationary period uh, included in the discussion? Um, it wasn't, but I believe that our, our employee handbook has a 90-day thing, but there's, I, we didn't discuss specifically a probationary okay. I period. Just, I just want to make sure the expectations it's are clear. at will, mm -hmm. so for I, or without cause. I, <laughs> I, 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 I understand, but the... Uh, just want to make sure that we're that it's a uh, that we're that we're going to be getting to know each other very well over those next 90 days and how we work together. Right. Um, the the other question is you mentioned forty dollars an hour. Um, the uh, that implies hourly. Is this going? Um, this and I position has it's always been policy. This has always been an hourly position. This has always been an hourly position. Okay. Herb Chafee was an hourly worker. Ryan was an hourly worker. Um, and at one of the areas where they generally, one of the reasons why we can get a, a, a superintendent for that price mm -hmm. is because they're eligible for overtime. Though typically that overtime comes out of snow and ice because typically they won't work over 40 hours unless there's a, an emergency event. Mm -hmm. Okay. That, that, I guess that's, that answers my question as to, as because in general, I don't believe Highway has a significant overtime budget. They don't. And the, and and the super's responsible for managing his own budget. So if he starts blowing through his budget, then, you know, we can start challenging him to actually make his budget. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we can, do, we can do it that way. Okay, that's, okay that's, that's a detail of how the highway department's operated that, uh, that escaped me. I thought they did that more on a, um, on a salary basis and, and with, but with comp time if they had to call out. But it sounds like it effectively works the same. Yes. And that's... In the end, that's the important thing is how it works out. Absolutely. All right, and let's see. Um, one thing I would, uh, uh, one expectation I would like to, one additional expectation I'd like to set is uh, during the uh, the first three months, if uh, we could get um, bi-weekly reports or reports in cadence with our meetings, in just I know that that way that will encourage more communication, help us understand what's going on, if there's anything of concern, that allows us to see it sooner. I, um, I feel that um, in the past we haven't always been properly diligent about getting those, and it's led to us to not have visibility so, into things. So Tom, I'm gonna to make a recommendation. Yes, Beth. Yes. Okay. Items like that don't go in an offer letter. Items like that go in the first week goals that mm -hmm. you set for somebody, which is in the goals and expectations. Mm -hmm. And then what you do is you manage people to the goals and expectations that you set forth in writing as part of your mm -hmm. onboarding as a supervisor. Yes. And, okay, and I, I apologize, I was not envisioning this being in the offer letter. Okay. I envision this being in discussion around the offer letter okay. as part of the, um, as, part of, as part of the context of it. Okay. And so it's like, and so it's like, and my thought is, I mean, I can, I mean, it could always work out that we, we make that, we make the offer letter and then some of this discussion happens and we uncover a deal breaker. My hope is that if we have a deal breaker, that comes up in discussion earlier rather than later so we have a better chance of working through it rather than um, bumping into it later. And that's, that's all. Well, I mean, if reporting every other week prior to the select board meeting is a deal breaker, then we don't want the person working for us. Exactly. So. But that's but let's my thought is let's make sure that's not an issue before we before we write the offer letter so, and rather than after. Mr. DeFlorio is here. Do you want to have him come up and just discuss this stuff about about expectations um, up front, or do you want to how, how do you want to handle it? Because no, um, that, that's that's all I had. Uh, Pete, have you heard anything that concerns you in on what we're looking for? I believe in transparency and great communication. Mm -hmm. So basically. You're my bosses, so I need to keep in good communication with you to keep you updated on not only the department, but mm -hmm. projects and progress in other areas. So no communication is not a problem at all. Okay, thank you. That's all. That's all. I'm good. Okay. One recommendation I do have is that, um, and given that we've been running shorthanded in the highway department, I think we have the budget to play with this way. I'd like to not necessarily terminate um, Gary's interim work but lower his hours right and make him available for um, uh, both a handoff uh, 
of what's going on in the department, as well as um, I'd like his input into a five-year plan for our roads, and that's something we don't have to like decide on 100% tonight, but I'd like to see probably somewhere between like a four to six week overlap, um, definitely at a much lower hours level for mm -hmm. Gary, it's, you know, somewhere in the order of like four to eight hours a week rather than what he's been working to do a, a solid transition to help with putting together a five-year plan. Because one of the things I'd like, I was thinking within the first six months, but maybe we try to, maybe we try to tag at least a draft to the, to the first 90 days is to, to get a, 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 at least a draft of a plan together. Um, initial to 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 drive kind of learning the town and and getting a sense of the backlog um, should we set maybe another meeting for that or is yeah. that covered under this agenda item um we probably because i'm well, totally it says on board permanent again. highway superintendent candidate discussion i think um i think you're probably right i think we probably need another agenda item about how to execute that because we did put his name in the agenda item but um, look, if we can put it on the next meeting, I'd like to see a little bit more overlap than we necessarily would typically have mm -hmm. to facilitate like a smooth transition because times when we haven't had that type of overlap, it's turned out pretty crappy for the town. Yeah, I, th I can get behind that. Uh, have you looked at the budget just to confirm that there's enough money in there? I expect there is. I'm just asking. I, I haven't looked specifically, but we've been running one person short for so long that I can't imagine that there's not some, some fun in there. I, I, okay, I, at this point, I don't have it. Do you want it, me to pull it up? I do not need you to pull it up. I just thought it's something we can look at afterwards. If there's a budget issue, we can bring it up later and, yeah. re and reconsider. Well, that may de determine the, the, the scope of the hours available. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but I, I, think, I, think, I, think, I think an overlap period... Um, it would make sense to uh, to ensure to allow for a smooth handoff. Um, so that would um, that hand that overlap period would start when Pete starts on the 29th, ninth. Yeah, is is what we're envisioning. Yep. Okay. So. And that's uh, and my thought is is that when we it's like we can we can talk to them and when we feel that the uh, that the Handoff is done. We can then end that. Period. Right, and I think that's part of the the every two week reporting is like how you know what progress they've made towards the five year plan, mm -hmm. and just make that a standing point of the the comms. Mm -hmm. Yeah, With the what's thought. what's been reviewed, what the, what the current considerations are, that sort of thing. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and then you you were envisioning four to six weeks. Is, am I remembering that right? Or like, like, or, or I think, it, I, think I, I think it's a, one of those things where we, we need to see where we're at both budget wise and planning wise. Mm -hmm. Right. So I think yeah. it depends. I guess I would say, um, practically it can't go more than 10 weeks cause that gets us to the end of the fiscal year. Right. So, so it's somewhere that, between it. four and 10 weeks. So there you go. Mm -hmm. Sounds good. That's what I've got. Right. So, and my thought was, um, you know, I made the motion. You could sign the offer letter since we have him here. He could make a decision and, and sign or not sign. And mm -hmm. that's kind of where we're at. All right. And then we can make a point of um, scheduling something 90 days from now to uh, as for, for an inter in, initial review. Actually, you know what? I would suggest that we schedule 45 days from now, halfway through the uh, probationary period, and just. Um, as sort of a uh, how we do sure. if there are any concerns if that we're not bringing them up at the end of the probationary period we're doing it during it I mean I, I mean Brad I expect you're going to continue to, yeah, uh, go to visit the, the department yeah. and so nothing's hopefully nothing will surprise us at that time but I'd right. like to have a little checkpoint where the whole board gets a chance to hear the update sure excellent I am I am done with the discussion and you two are also <laughs> all, in, all in favor of Extending a uh, the off, uh, 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 write, writing uh, me signing the offer letter as described uh, to Peter DeFlorio as our new permanent highway superintendent. Please say aye. 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 All right. Let me sign that.
is the 11th I said that. Oh, are you keeping minutes? I Peter, totally you have mail. Based on it. <laughs> <laughs> Thank well, you. I'm technically the clerk. So I never did finish the report. Did you get my eyeballs on you? No, I mm -hmm. haven't even talked to her. Okay. I'll finish it then. And we can notify the in, our interim treasurer that there's a uh, an onboarding to be to be done indeed <laughs> thank you sir and sir thank you oh, thank you i'm so excited <laughs> welcome <laughs> this is going to be a great day <laughs> it is thank you looking forward to it we'll be seeing each other soon <laughs> we will all right awesome Enjoy thanks for weekend. coming tonight you're welcome all right i guess there's nothing else to do on agenda item number one agenda item number two open meeting yeah. law complaint against the select board all right, and so yeah, I can't type to save my life. I forgot to bring my hard copy. But uh, to summarize, the uh, the uh, complaint was uh, do we bring it up? Twofold. I want I want my own copy. It's just it's a work it's my work laptop, and so I just cannot extend the timeout of the. Um, there we go. All right. So uh, let's see. Uh, the complaint was twofold. One was that the uh, agenda was not specific enough. Though um, I will note that there is no. There is, it is, it is a very vague complaint that the agenda was not specific enough. There is no specific agenda item called out, and there is no suggestion that based on, I did not see anything, there is no feedback as in based on the discussion, this would have been a sufficient level of detail. Um, Mr. Holdcraft, as the complainant, is here, and so um, we can ask him to clarify that. I would um, ask him, does that make, uh, should we, uh, should we have him up to clarify that? Sure. All right. Ms. Holcraft, would you care to join us, please? So, so sir, on the, uh, on the first element of your complaint regarding the agenda, um, what was the, um, can, you be, can you give us a little more specificity as to um, which agenda item you felt was, um, was insufficiently clear and um, what you think would have been an appropriate, an appropriate level of detail? Mr. Mayor, may I raise the point of inquiry? Mr. Ke Mr. Kelleher, I, um, no, no, question. no uh, right. not not at the moment. I, it's like I he, he there a an open meeting complaint has been filed against this board uh, by Mr. Holdcraft, and I I don't see why and the, I feel I, I am I feel I am not clearly understanding the nature of the complaint as it just says as the complaint is vague saying that the agenda is vague without any specific mention of which agenda item it was and uh, and why the why the language in the agenda was vague and so I see no reason why to interrupt this meeting to for your question just when I've asked Mr. Holcraft to clarify so Mr. Holcraft could you uh, back to the question which agenda which agenda item do you feel was uh, was insufficiently clear well, in general, a lot of the agenda yeah. items you have on are not very clear. But um, the one in particular that yeah. I was talking about was the host agreement. Most people in this community don't know what, what's going on with this host agreement is. And it was very vague on your agenda. Okay. And, and I think That's... that should have been, you know, it was a pretty big discussion. And I think it should have been a little more broad of what that meant, you know. So when someone reads the agenda, they can say, you know, have some kind of an idea of what that meant. Okay, um, that's a um, that's not I, I, that's not a bad point. Um, as as someone who's been in the middle of this, I HCA is very familiar to me, and that um, I can certainly take that as a um, I, I can certainly take that as, a, as and make the effort to um, to think to to think about the agenda items. Um, from the point of view of someone outside of town government right. with with a little less and so right. it's like and so it's like so 
I that's my point. And that's, and yeah. and so and so I I don't know that it and so without stip, without stipulating that I, without without agreeing that your complaint is valid, I will say that I can definitely make more of an effort to make it even more clear to everyone in town. Okay. All right. And I don't want you to agree with me because that won't look good for you, Tom. <clears throat> well, I could agree with you, but then we'd both be wrong. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know about that. <laughs> I don't think that flies. Don't lead with your chin, Dave. <laughs> So, right. it's so, all good. so the other, so, 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 and then the uh, the <clears throat> other aspect of your complaint was, and I just have to call it up, is that um, oh, oh, and there we go. Now I, I apologize. I read, I'm reading second paragraph, and was clearly not enough. So, you were a little more specific. I just need, I needed to read further along, and then. So your other complaint was that we adjourned the meeting at 820, then remained as a quorum to discuss and sign documents, including what appeared to be a contract. Um, members of the audience, discussion was held with them and went on for several minutes. Um, yes, we did sign a contract after the meeting had adjourned. I have reviewed the recording of the meeting, and, uh, and I will ask the other members of the select board to, uh, to chime in if they have a different recollection. Is that at 57 minutes into the recording on YouTube, posted to YouTube, to the Brookfield Community Media Channel, um, in that one or two minute period afterwards, the board voted affirmatively, unanimously, to sign the contract. Signature of the contract does not need to occur in open meeting. My recollection of the meeting, and again I'll rely on my, the other board members, is that the contract was ready for signature after the meeting, and therefore the board executed the will that it agreed to an open meeting to sign the contract, but the signatures occurred afterwards. My recollection, Beth? I'm, I'm sorry? sorry, I was going to say, and any opinions expressed there too at that point are moved <coughs> because the decision had already been made. Yes, and my recollection was that it was, we discussed about the contract. I think some of the discussion might have been in about the language in the contract we had agreed to but no discussion of changing the contract was done. And yeah. other than that, I think it was chit chat. Um, do I, uh, what, do you t what do you two remember from that time? That would be my opinion. That sounds about right. Okay. I haven't reviewed the tape, but and honestly, the way my life is, I don't know that I recall yeah. exactly, but I do know for a fact that the only things that we were talking about were things that we had already talked about. So I don't know that we can consider that a violation of open meeting because there was no changes in determination or, or it you know. was It was it was discussion, it was recounting of, it was factual recounting of previous discussions yeah. and, <clears throat> and around the physical signing of a contract that the board had agreed to. Yeah. So that's, um, and, and that's my recollection also. And so, and, and I, but I understand that the, the, the appearance of a violation of open meeting law is, is of concern. But do you, do you agree that the signing of a contract that the board has, that, that if a board votes to sign a contract in open meeting, that the signature can take place at any time at the board's convenience? No, I don't agree with that at all. I mean, really? Really, because you, why would you do it afterwards? You had people up here standard from practice. the community. <laughs> you don't know what you're doing or not doing. You say you didn't make any changes, but why would you do it after the meeting's convened and everybody, everybody is, the cameras are all off except for a couple. How do we know, how do we know just on an open scope of things, how do we know you're not, you're doing, why would you sign it after? You know, that raises the question, everybody, what are they doing? Is it making some changes here? The average person out in the public would say, hey, why didn't they sign it during the meeting? Well, well, just because people like walk up and steal paperwork off of our desk during meetings, you know, it maybe it's, it's, that's why you don't trust the fact that we're just executing what we stated we were going to do during the meeting. Yeah. Stealing I believe, papers? What are you talking about? I believe, I, I, be, I, I believe that the contract that was the contract proposal that was discussed is a public document it should be in the meeting minutes yep the signed contract is a public document right and i believe that someone should that Third question that that that, that that 
someone could look at the proposed contract, follow along and say, oh, yeah, this is what they're talking about, this is what they're talking about, this is what they're talking about, and then look at the final signed contract and say, yeah, here's the change they made, here's the change they made, here's the change they made. And so therefore, signing, and my understanding is that it is standard practice for signatures to be done. My, I, and I would say that if we, because we had originally talked about signing it the following Tuesday to accommodate that schedule. Right. Yeah. And then as a, in order to provide, I would say, better service to the residents of the town, we found a way to sign the contract more immediately because the signed contract is what he needed to move forward with the Cannabis Control Commission. Right. And so rather than holding him up because the, con the contract wasn't going to be ready at, at a until Tuesday, we found a way to make the signable contract ready at the, at at the, the end meeting. of the meeting. Yep. And based on my understanding of practice, the signature is the oh, and is, is the result the of the board expressing its will. And the board had expressed its will and its decision in open meeting in conformance with law. And the signature is a formality that doesn't need doesn't need to be done. Now the signature needs to be in a contract that reflects the board's will. And I think the record will support that. And uh, Mr. Horvath, if you, if you feel that the, the signing of a document, even the final signing, it's like it, it is outside of open meeting is illegal, I ask you to take that, then we can take that to the Attorney General. You can do that, but that's not the point here. The point is, Actually, you guys had a quorum, <laughs> yes. you adjourned the meeting, the public meeting was over, and yes. then you still conducted business after that fact. Um, and that, the public meeting's over, that's it. Um, so see, you actually, you so you can say all this stuff about signing, changing this, that. You can stand there for five, sit there for five minutes, and explain all this. Fact is, it's a public meeting. It's adjourned, and the three of you were still. Then you went back and started doing town business. No, nah, you can't do it. We're not no. doing uh, town business. We were executing. town business we were signing, ex we signing a host agreement with the town is town business. Beth. So we were executing what we had already voted on. Yeah, why don't you do Typi it during the meeting? Typically, typically, yeah. honestly, a lot of times if we don't have the document right there ready when, when we vote it, okay, but you we'll did leave it, it in time. the office and people yeah. will walk yeah. by yeah. And, and do it. So That's, it's no different than us signing outside of the meeting after a vote. There's, but there's you had something. the document ready that night. You could have signed it during the meeting. You didn't do that. Because, so, I, you know, I don't, I, I, would, I don't, sorry, Matt, I would right, suggest sorry. taking it up with the Attorney General. Yeah. And my, my, <laughs> yeah. my thought is, is that the, the sign okay. signing the document outside of the meeting is not a problem. No. And that open meeting law does not prevent us from talking as a group outside of open meeting. It forbids us from discussing town, debating. from discussing and debating town business. My Recollect and so therefore when we are together like and there was just the example I was ch before the meeting I was chatting with Pete about something about Business that could about something in the warrant book Brad walked in and what was the first thing I said Brad as you walked up as I walked up Well, well yeah, so you general, it's like I said I, I have to stop talking leave. about this <laughs> because Brad's now here and we have a quorum so this is something that I try to be aware of and I feel that I believe that had I felt I was talking about town business and discussing something, I would not have done it. But it is a, it is your, Mr. Oldcraft, we have explained our recollection, mm -hmm. we have explained what we feel happened, and we have explained why we feel <clears throat> that the behavior of the members of the board after the meeting was adjourned is not a violation of open meeting law. Now, so... You just contradicted yourself with what you said about Brad, the three of you here, after the public meeting is over. And you said you no. couldn't even talk to Brad out in the hallway, but after the meeting's public no, no. meeting is no, over. No, 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 wait, wait, wait. Let me refer, no, yeah. you, uh, we will go, you can go back to tape and I will say almost the exact same thing. I said, I, I was talking, excuse me, I am talking, Mr. Holdgren. Yeah, I am talking. Go ahead. No, I am talking. Continue. And we'll not no, Continue no, no. talking. No. Don't I, yell at me. Don't raise your voice to me. Okay? Well, then, then don't interrupt me. I, I said continue. Zip, zip, continue zip, continue zip. talking. You may zip continue. It. You may zip it. There we go. Now, now you can continue. As I was saying, you see, 
I try and talk, and you just keep talking. You keep talking. You're like my 10-year-old daughter has to get in the last word. It's, it's so much fun. Your wife gets the last word in. Yes, sir. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's what you like. So go ahead, continue mm -hmm. on. Why, thank you. You're welcome. You would, you would, you would think that. All right. I'm done. I have explained my position. He is not willing to listen. I see. If you would like to hear my position again, no, we can, you we can arrange clear. a video. I'm good. Thank you, Mr. Holdman. Right. You're welcome. And so the board, um, I have not reviewed my position on, uh, excuse me, not position. I have, I have, uh, I looked over the format for responding to this, the requirements, but I don't recall them. Has anyone, has, does anyone have a fresh recollection of the process for responding to an open meeting? Not fresh, I'd have to look it back up. My, my, under, my recollection is, um, let's see. Uh, well, the, it says right on there, doesn't it? On the form? I believe, it, it may. I it's, hold my heart. Okay, well, yeah, hold on, Blair. Yeah. I mean, I think we are, I, my belief is the general form is that we need to respond to the complainant, and then if the complainant is unsatisfied, they may then bring it to the attorney. Correct. General. Correct. Okay. So I want to make sure that, and so it now is, does our response have to be in writing, or can it be verbal? Oh, 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 oh. It's got to be writing, I'm sure. <laughs> I, would, I would put it in writing. <laughs> All right. Then, um, then uh, what I would like is, um, then what I will do is I will, um, I will put an agenda. I will let, then let's review a written response next Thursday. Point of order. And formal. Uh, it's, it's the, the, point of order. There's this, the, the, Mr. Mr. Cowler, are you... You, you fail to understand what a point of order is. A point of order is not, I want you to listen to me. A point of order is, you are running the meeting wrong. You make a and, procedural mistake is what a point of order is, sir. Uh, I, I, in the meeting, I'm making a procedural mistake. You're if I'm making a procedural mistake and respond to open meeting law complaint, that is not a point of order in this meeting. That is a point of, that is a point of information or something, or, or of some such. So, so. I mean, okay. you have a point wrong, but you, I think there's, a, there's, there's, there's a procedure that you're, you're going to, Okay. Uh, yeah, okay. If, we're, if uh, we, the bo the board will refresh the board will refresh itself on on the proper procedure. Um, so. Okay. So wait a second. Let's 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 take a look here. So. Okay. You can go slow to go fast. So. A uh, complaint is right for reviews by the attorney general thirty days after the complaint is filed with the public. Body. So, uh, a complainant who has filed a complaint with a public body and seeks further review must file a complaint with the Attorney General after 30 day local review period has elapsed, but before 90 days has passed since the date of violation and the date that the violation was reasonably discoverable. So, let's see. So, so basically, we need to respond. Let's see here. Okay, so upon receipt, the chair of the public body should distribute copies of the complaint to members of the public body for their review. The public body has 14 days from the date of receipt to review the complainant's allegations, take remedial action if appropriate, notify the complainant of remedial action, and forward a copy of the complaint and the description of the remedial action taken to the Attorney General. Okay. While the public body may de delegate responsibility for responding to the complaint to counsel or other individual, it must first meet to do so. Okay. The public body may request additional information from the complainant. The public body may also request an extension of time to respond to the complaint. A request for extension should be made within 14 days of the receipt of the open meeting law, receipt of the open meeting law, um, receive the complaint, and then uh, using um, 
And that's per the Open Meeting Law Guide, page 18, version 318.15, whatever. Complaint by the public body. Receipt of the complaint by the public body. The request for extension should be made in writing to the Division of Open Government and should include a copy of the complaint and state the reason for the request. <coughs> so fundamentally, we, what we have, right, is 14 days from the date of the receipt. So when did we receive the complaint? Last Thursday. Last Thursday? A week ago, uh, the 4th. April 4th. April 4th, okay. So we have 14 days to review the complainant's allegations, take remedial action if appropriate, and notify the complainant of the remedial action, and forward a copy of the complaint and the description of the remedial action taken to the Attorney General. Okay. So it does not specify that the, that the notification of remedial action needs to be in writing or whether it needs to be verbal, right? It can be, it sounds like it can be either, and it's not necessarily stated specifically. But obviously any communication to the Attorney General, which would be a copy of the complaint and the description of the remedial action is what we forward to the Attorney General. Mm -hmm. So, um, it sounds like, and I don't know that we voted it, and I don't know that we need to vote it, but um, it sounds like based, there are two portions to the complaint. The first is that a statement that the, that the uh, agenda item was unclear, which, I mean, frankly, anybody that's been tracking any of the local business has seen HCA and Sun Fusions on enough documents that I think that that's kind of a frivolous complaint, personally. Mm -hmm. um, and I think we've just, and we've also established that if there was, there was no determination or modifications made other than that what was discussed in open meeting, so the mechanics of signing it after the meeting, again, is an unfounded complaint. I agree. The, uh, the, the, the signature outside of open meeting, the signature does not need to happen in open meeting. Yeah. So, um, not when we ex expressly voted to sign it. So, um, take, uh, notify the complainant of the remedial action. So at this time, I think, it, as I followed the discussion, the only remedial action that I noted in, for inclusion in the minutes was that you agreed to try and look at items in the future from an outside perspective when building the agendas. Yeah, that, that I agree. That, it, that it's easy when we're, when we're the ones seeing agenda after agenda after agenda to assume that mm -hmm. folks that are actually following local municipal activity would know exactly what HCA relative to Sun Fusions was about considering how much awareness I would say the community has had around uh, marijuana in this town going back now two years and fights during you know annual mm -hmm. town meeting and the like mm -hmm. right and it's all been the same people so I mean it sounds like we just need to draft a response or authorize one of us to draft a response, send it to our council because we can delegate. So I would kind of like to make a motion that we delegate to KP Law to draft our response yep. based on the content of this discussion. Sounds good. Was yes. it up a second? Yeah, that was a second. Here's <laughs> <laughs> was a motion, that was a second. <laughs> all right, um, all, in, all in favor of, of uh, delegating the uh, the, the drafting of the response to KP Law, please say aye. 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 All right. I, I will speak to Michelle and uh, share with her the details and make sure she has what she needs to uh, provide our response to the Attorney General. Okay, great. So, and I'll, I'll indicate what I said and what I was going to indicate in the minutes, and I'll do draft minutes fast. I'm trying to do them sort of real time. Okay. So that you'll have a copy of the minutes to at least draft minutes to provide the KP. Mm -hmm. Thank you. So, I was going. To, I was also going to ask uh, Jacob for a, an advanced copy of the uh, recording in case any anything needed. Yeah, to that would be good. Consult. You could you could yeah, always send them what, the, send her the video and mm -hmm. and they can and give her the time hacks around the discussion. Yeah. So, anything else? I think I think we've charted a path forward there. 
All right, so agenda item number three, after hours access. And it was occurring to me as part of this work, uh, let's see, oh wait, let me make sure, town hall after hours building access, employees needing access. Eh. This is about employees, so. Well, I'm not getting in because I don't have a key, so. <laughs> <laughs> well, but you, you should be on the list. Whether you, whether you have the key to get here or not, you should have access. This is a much longer list than I expected. I think it's shorter than the one I originally had seen. Oh, okay. I, I'm sorry. I thought it was two columns. It's, it's, no, it's, right. it's roll name. Roll right. name. Okay. There we go. Board of Health. Homeland Security? What's that? There, there, there's a, there's a oh, Keith yeah. Carmen. He's in the fire department. He's probably a de facto. I just. Didn't realize that would be a specific role. Right. It's, it's, Pete, Peter? That term doesn't exist here. He's a deputy emergency management director. Okay. Uh, I, yeah, I would, I would think that someone, that anyone would be through the either the fire department or the uh, Brookfield Emergency Management Area, or agency, excuse me. All right. So, let's see. So, Peter, um, Keith Carmen doesn't need a, after hours access to the building? Or a key? Or? In, no, for, in I, no, he'd have access to the fire department cash open, but no. Okay. No. All right, thank you. Um, why would the library need access to this building? Um, library trust, library, I don't know. Uh, you know, it's because we used to have a bunch of stuff upstairs that they were going through. Oh, and but now that they have the 18 Collins like, Street, we had a we had a bunch of records and we mm -hmm. had a bunch of documents, and they were going through like all kinds of stuff to see whether it should go in the archives or not. Mm -hmm. So uh, we can ask her; if she still really needs it. But that's that's what I recall of, of why they have the access. And then, other than that. Um, I mean, I know, I know advisory committee has had access because they meet here. Um, recreation, do they meet here? Do we, do we generally give it to a committee so they can access the building for meetings? Beth? I'm sorry? Um, I noticed that the recreation committee is on the building access list. Yeah, every that, chair Yeah, every committee every chair committee mm -hmm. okay. has a key in order to allow them to hold meetings. Okay, that's, that's what I suspected because I'm going, they don't, I didn't think they kept anything here. All right, thank you. Yeah, I mean, if they needed to get to their mailbox too. After hours, right. yeah, that makes sense. Yeah, otherwise mm -hmm. they could only, a lot of people could only pick up their mail on Wednesdays. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah, after work. Yeah. Oh, yeah, this, all right. And then the AA group. They're still in existence, I believe. No, no I, I know they're still in existence, but they are, they, they are a community group rather than and everything else on this list is, a, right. is is an entity under town government in one form or another, either directly right. on the select board's control or on a co-equal board, except for X and except for the AA group. Yeah. And I'm and I'm not opposed to supporting them. It's just it just I sort think of that's caught my eye. Long standing yeah, yeah they've been the and, and part of that falls under our I know we, we had our discussion around um, community access and mm -hmm. after hours access and whether it would be like whether the, their access would be sponsored by someone who has a building key and be responsible or whether we would need to have someone let them in or whether we would just let them have their own access. 
I'm not. I mean, I'm not looking to change that right historic, now. Their historic performance has been they leave the place cleaner than it is when they show up. So yeah. I mean, yeah. Yeah. I'm not. I'm not looking to change that. I'm just, more just noticing things as I go. All right. Right. So what I would say is that, and I, let's see, yeah, edit as see fit. So I would say that we, um, that we send it, ask Karen to uh, distribute this to all the uh, boards, committees, and town employees and ask them to say yes, yay, or nay. Um, hold on, treasurer. What do you mean? Uh, ask to say whether they say, to allow people to say no, I need access, I need this person to have access, or to say I don't need access. How did we get this list in the first place? I, I think Karen put it together. And did if, she consult them? I don't. If she were here, I could ask her, but she had the day off. Right. So let me, let me put it this way. And if Karen says she's already consulted them, then that just shortcuts that discussion. Well, I mean, we would just, so like, just come back with our edits and say, does the library need it? Base I, I that we can let it go, and if we need to add people, add people we need to add people. Yeah. Yeah. I, I don't think it has to be perfect before we institute it. I think it just needs to be good enough that... Mm -hmm. You know, we're not getting uh, that they're, they're not taking advantage of the fact that I just have to jump over the fence and come open it for Right. Because mm -hmm. these are going to be individual pin codes. Yeah. Right. Yeah. And someone's going to learn how to do it if we need to add people. Yeah. We'll need to figure that out, but we can do that. And if it takes a couple days for someone to get their code entered, it takes a couple days. Mm -hmm. But. Ideally, we'll see that coming and we can get that entered before they need it. All right. So I will, I will, I will reach out to Brenda and ask her if the uh, library needs that. Because, and actually, what, a lot of what was in there probably was more fell under historical commission than library, those old records. I don't know. I know they, I know they were. I know library and historical work together on that. Yeah. But it's just my my thought is if someone doesn't need it, then it's just better to, if they don't need access. Then it's better not to right. grant them access. Yeah, the historical commission I believe had stuff in the third floor, mm -hmm. and then it moved over to the annex when that was. Yeah, but I would say the historical commission, since they're technically a committee, then under policy they should they sh they should have access. Mm -hmm. And then. I was going to say, yeah. And then police and fire have access. The only offsite group that, do, the only offsite office that doesn't have access is highway, I think. I don't think, I don't know it's needed. You know what? If they needed it, they would have said something by now. So, I, we can, if they need it, we can add them to the list sometime in the future. All right, I think we're good on the list. I'll ask Brenda, and if she doesn't need it, then we'll arrange to, uh, for her to not get a code and for her to return any key she has. And if she, and if she needs it, then, then we'll give it to Why her. Why would we not give it to the town collector? The town collector? Oh, oh you mean Brenda, okay. Uh, you meant Brenda Medeville. I'm yes, sorry. yes, yeah. <laughs> yeah, sorry. Never mind. <laughs> Wrong Brenda. <laughs> All right. Anything else on that one? No. Nope. All right. Uh, Board of Health Intermunicipal Agreement. Is this, do we sign this every year or is it a yeah, three year? That's every year. All right. And if we don't sign it, it screws up the whole mix of towns involved. <laughs> <laughs> well, I think it also means we don't get access to, uh, to services and assistance that we rely on. Right. <laughs> so I don't, uh, I don't see it. And then did anyone confirm that this is unchanged from past years other than dates? What's that? The, in the uh, intermunicipal agreement for the uh, health services. Oh, the one with uh, 
You know, I don't know. I don't have a copy of last year's. Mm -hmm. um, does this need to be? I do know it was strongly advised originally by Board of Health for us to go ahead and adopt it. Mm -hmm. Mr. Kelleher, as as a member of the Board of Health, are you a, can you confirm that whether this agreement is uh, what, what changes there are in the contract before us against the um, the contract we signed last year? Unfortunately, Mr. Reader, I wasn't on the board of last year, so I don't know the answer to that question. Sorry. Okay, I, I thought. You, okay, no worries. Thank you for uh, thank Not you for Not when the they adopted it. This was adopted right before. Mm -hmm. Okay. And didn't Maureen send something? I don't know. Did she? Yeah. Touches the final draft. Stockman is, uh, or is this the, Let's see here. on Monday. Yeah. Is this something we could sign next week after just verifying that there's nothing's been changed? Or we can agree to sign it and then uh, pending Pending clarity down. and then right. we can pending, come in and yeah, sign. Pending it. confirmation. Right. Yeah. And that way if and if there is a change, then that authorization to sign is voided because Correct. of the change and we can reconsider next time. I like that approach because then we're not then we don't have to reconsider it if it's unchanged from last yeah, year. Yeah, I'll make a motion to uh, authorize um, the chair to sign the intermunicipal uh, board of health agreement uh, pending verification from the Board of Health that the terms are substantively unchanged or ex and or acceptable to the Board of Health. Mm -hmm. Second. All right. Uh, all in favor of that's motion, please say aye. 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 All right. Thank you. That way we can hopefully get that done next uh, early next week. All right. Uh, number five, Board of Health warrant article request. Um, we have received a request from the uh, Board of Health. Um, Mr. Geller, I didn't get a, uh, is, is that for a fiscal year 23 bill? So basically, yes, Maureen came, came across a bill that was, um, when she came across it, it was too late to pay. Okay. So I think it's like $700 and something. My memory shows me right. Yep, that sounds about right. I can I can call it up. Th uh, thank you for confirming. Yes, the uh, request is for the uh, to put on the warrant a uh, an article to uh, pay a prior fiscal year bill that the Board of Health has. Um, mm -hmm. yeah. And so, go ahead. So, Beth. Um, I'm sorry. Can we revisit? I, I'd like to make a motion to revisit our prior um, our prior uh, topic. Um, the intermunicipal agreement. Yep. All right, Brad. Second. Second. All right, all in favor of revisiting agenda item number four, please say aye. 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 Right. So it's pretty clear actually from Maureen's uh, note that, I mean, this is the boilerplate, this is the agreement as it stands. I think mm -hmm. we just need to go ahead and Right, that's what I it. understood it to be. Okay, then then that's fine. It, 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 then I think we've made our determination. Yeah. And so that means that then I will, I will sign it before we leave and uh, leave the signed document for Karen. All right. So I make a motion that we just go ahead and sign, sign it. it. Second. All, right. um, all in favor of signing immediately uh, based on Beth's finding, please say aye. 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 All right. And It's going to take me a minute to fill, fill out all this detail. So the um, you don't so have you to. You're authorized unless they need our signatures. You're authorized. No, to it's, sign it's to fill it in contact after. name, email, phone, address. Okay. I well, we've already established you can sign it after. Oh, that's true. <laughs> <laughs> all right, then. Then I will. I will sign. I will sign so effectively immediately. All right, let's go. Back. <laughs> Thank you. We're 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 almost an hour in, <laughs> and we're almost done. All right, so. Uh, just to confirm the amount, seven hundred twenty-five dollars. 
So I'll take a motion to uh, include um, this requested article in the warrant. So moved. Second. All right. All in favor of adding the uh, the Board of Health um, article for uh, as requested, please say aye. 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 All right. Thank you. I will ask Karen to add that. And the election year warrant, sixth and last. I'm sorry. I believe the, we had a seventh item on the posted agenda, but I've, I've been told we need to pass that over. So, okay. So, agenda item number six. All right, I'll make a motion that we sign the annual election warrant. Second. All right, all in favor of signing the election warrant, please say aye. 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 All right, and we all, three copies, we all sign each. And let's see, the last item on the agenda was the list of special municipal employees. I'm told it needs to be updated, and therefore we are passing it over. So I will take a motion to pass that over. Uh, motion to pass over the list of special municipal employees discussion. Second. All right, all in favor of passing over that agenda item, please say aye. 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 Thank motion you. to adjourn. All in favor of, oh, thank you for the second. All in favor of adjourning this meeting at 7.15 and then finish signing after the meeting is adjourned. Please say aye. 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 aye.